Jim Flynn started uh, traveling to Central America around 1984, and since that time he's made 20 trips. Uh, I think 20 is a estimate, and maybe even more. But he's here today because uh, Oscar Romero, Archbishop of San Salvador, was assassinated in El, in El Salvador on March 24th, 1980. In 2009, Jim made one of his trips uh, as a longtime advocate for those who are poor and marginalized in Central America. He traveled to El Salvador to visit the places made holy by the sacrifice of Romero and other martyrs, including the four women religious, six Jesuits, Father Rutilio Grande. And today, he's going to share his PowerPoint presentation of that trip give us uh, some background and information on, the, on what's happening down there now. In any case, I would just like to uh, share with you some uh, visuals and stories of, of uh, El Salvador, and specifically centered around Archbishop Romero. Um, every March 24th, uh, 4th, 20, uh, 25th, 24th is the anniversary of his assassination in 1980. As he was celebrating Mass in, in a chapel, you'll see pictures of the chapel, um, where he was, he was celebrating Mass uh, in, in a, in a uh, hospital, hospital grounds. He was assassinated um, because, simply because, I think he had a conversion years before he uh, was was he when he was made bishop? He was a very conservative man, and um, I think he was chosen to be a bishop uh, of, San, of San Salvador, the capital of El Salvador, um, simply because he they felt he would continue the conservative swing. But uh, he was soon converted by uh, what he saw and heard uh, from the many uh, people that were being killed uh, all over El Salvador, and that's what influenced him and changed his uh, way. And he, as so often we say, he was converted by the poor, <clears throat> by the death, death of so many people, and, uh, and right in front of his own eyes. And of course, the thing that really turned him around basically was when his good friend, uh, Padre Rutilio, Rutilio Grande, a Jesuit priest, who was also kind of the master of ceremonies when he was made a bishop and a very, very good friend of Romero, when he was assassinated uh, out on the road, uh, I'll show you a picture of the road where he was assassinated with, uh, and many, many, of you, many of you have probably seen the movie Romero, and uh, in, in that movie it shows uh, Rutilio Grande with two, two uh, passengers being killed, uh, a couple other people escape. But uh, in any case, Archbishop Romero is uh, considered by the people of El Salvador and elsewhere uh, as being a saint. And uh, as it would happen, uh, some other people in powerful positions do not consider him a saint, if you understand what I'm saying. And uh, he probably will not be canonized as a, a, a saint, but the people don't care. Everywhere, all, all over El Salvador, you'll see San Romero, uh, Saint Romero. So they don't care whether he gets, they get a piece of paper saying he's canonized or not. They, they all know he's, he's a saint, and they pray to him in that way. San Romero, Saint Romero, pray for us. So um, he's a symbol in El Salvador of the many, many uh, martyrs that uh, were uh, victimized in El Salvador in, from the, in, from the uh, 70s, even some were back in the 60s into the 70s, on through the 80s until a peace accords were signed in the early 90s in uh, El Salvador. So with that, I'd just like to walk through with you some, I hope you can see from wherever you're sitting, you're sit sitting. Um, some of the things uh, that you that I saw a few years ago. I've been back to Salvador for a couple of years now, but uh, it's like going to me. It's like going back to uh, Holy Land. And, and uh, several years ago, when one of my at an anniversary, some of the <clears throat> people uh, wanted to send me to Rome, and I said, "Well, you send me to Rome, but I'm not going. And, <laughs> and you can send me to Salvador, and I'll go." So they sent me to Salvador, and I was saved. <clears throat> Role. The Irishman, there's an Irish joke about that too. <laughs> Not a joke, but a quit. To go to Rome uh, is little profit 
endless pain. The master you seek in Rome, you find at home, or seek in vain. <laughs> So he is a saint among the many saints and martyrs in, El Salvador. On, on, in San Salvador. There's a wall remembering the many people that were killed, and in this wall it depicts that one of the, those years of martyrdom, and he's just one of many. So they he, they didn't want to, as you can see his picture here, just in the midst of other people who have suffered and died. Uh, also, too, he's um, considered in this wall. It's um, right at, in a park. In the, in the middle of, of San Salvador. And uh, he's just one of many uh, uh, among the mothers of the disappeared. The mothers of the disappeared would, uh, would wear these uh, white veils over their heads to symbolize that they had a daughter or a son who would disappear. One thing about Salvadorans, and I think uh, Central Americans, their art is so graphic and so beautiful. And on this one long wall, is a see up here, the city up here. But in this long wall, they have various, various uh, paintings of, this, of, the, of their country and what happened and, and some of the things that happened during the years of violence in, in the war. 75,000 people were killed during those years and their names are, many of their names are inscribed on a wall, in, in, on this wall, in kind of a marble kind of thing. And you'll notice right here, or not, marker is Oscar Arnolfo Romero. And they didn't separate him out from any place else, but put him in, in a alphabetical order just like anybody else. So this, this monument to the memory of, uh, to memory and truth, uh, we'll read for it. This is a space for the memory, and, and the, its intention is to immortalize in the conscience, Salvadoran consciences, the, na the names of women and men, boys and girls, victims of violence, uh, of direct, human rights violations during the repression of the years of, of the years of the 70s and on into, into 1980. And the following civil war, Sixth Salvadoran Civil War, the, between 1981 and January of 1992. The Commission of Truth, sponsored by the United Nations, published an, uh, a report which contained the, the sad testimony of the families of whom, of whom have been, assass have been assassinated uh, and disappeared. One of its recommendations was that to construct a memorial dedicated to the victims so that there would be some kind of moral reparation. But only the civil society has been able to uh, accomplish this particular thing, this memorial. This is a memorial for the encounter or for, the meet for meeting these victims, uh, for never forgetting them, for honoring their memory, and returning their, their, their dignity. It is not permitted that, this, that, it should not be permitted that the horror be repeated and, and, and forget the, uh, some talk, uh, the, and to forget to feel their, the, these struggles for, for our culture, for one culture of peace and for reconcili true reconciliation. This space for hope, for, secure, for continuing to dream, and constructing a society much, much more just, human, and equitable. This committee for the monument of, to the uh, monument to the victims, civil victims of uh, human rights de 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 violations. Che, uh, as well as the four sisters, four married old nuns who were killed in 1980, December 2nd, 1980. <coughs> See, their artwork is so beautiful and so expressive. And on the right, you can see the oligarchs with their death holding their ears in, in the middle military. And Romero in the middle of the other people. <clears throat> the were chapel and where he was killed, his very beautiful little chapel on the grounds of a hospital where he was kind of a chaplain. And um, <clears throat> it, was a, it probably holds maybe 75 or 100 people. Uh, and from the front door is where the assassin came in while he was celebrating Mass in, uh, on this altar. <clears throat> says on this altar, I want to see Romero gave his life for his people. <clears throat> All over the country, you'll see graphics of him, of him in various ways. This is somebody's 
uh, a, a building, just an ordinary building of people. <clears throat> and he is supposed to, supposed to have said this, uh, and so it's inscribed on the front of a chapel in, in the, uh, at the university, Central American University, where the Jesuits were killed. In, in uh, the library in the, the University of Central America, uh, in San Salvador, there, is a, there are various memorabilia of the assassination of Romero and the Jesuits. But uh, you'll notice right in, in the middle of the picture, there's a, uh, a soldier who shot the picture of Romero in the heart. This was in 1989. He was killed in 19, 1980. <clears throat> Say things like that will get you killed. This place like El Salvador, probably in Colombia, and, <clears throat> and as a matter of fact, in Guatemala as well, because there a bishop uh, was also killed in 1998. The cathedral in, in uh, San Salvador is a very beautiful building. Um, <clears throat> they've renovated it, <clears throat> and uh, when Oscar, Oscar Romero was buried uh, at his funeral, <clears throat> they uh, they brought his they brought his body out here, and as they did so, just bringing his body out here at the end of the at the end of the mass, soldiers on buildings all around started firing and killed a number of people at the funeral, and uh, and many people uh, ran back into the into the cathedral, uh, and the firing kept continued. That was during at the end of his funeral, but they've redone the cathedral now, <clears throat> and it's very beautiful, typical uh, Salvadoran art. The cathedral inside is uh, kind of what you would expect uh, uh, Spanish architecture, uh, Spanish heritage, all the Spanish kind of uh, saint uh, types of art. Um, and over on the far right, uh, where my cursor is, <clears throat> there is a picture of the founder Opus Dei. And if any of you know what Opus Dei is or what it stands for, it's a very ultra-conservative a movement in the Catholic Church, <clears throat> and uh, they, uh, this is upstairs in the cathedral, and they have a picture of this guy, but of course no picture of Romero. But underneath, underneath the, the uh, cathedral is a very nice place where they dedicated to Romero and, and where they buried the, you know, all the bishops. But um, the original tomb was here, and, and uh, I was there just shortly after he was, uh, maybe a few years after he was killed, maybe five years, I don't remember. And, uh, and this was his tomb in the basement, temporary, temporary tomb, um, where all the bishops were buried in the walls there. It says, uh, nobody has greater love than to give his life for his, for his friends. Archbishop Oscar Romero, the, four, the fourth Archbishop of San Salvador, born 1917, he died on the 24th of March, 1980. Now there is a new uh, shrine to him, and he's buried in here. There are back on the wall back here where other bishops were buried. He, he would have been buried back there. Let me, let me go back one. Uh, he would have been buried back there, but they did make a very beautiful tomb in his honor. And uh, people, it's very beautiful to uh, see people come like this gentleman here. Uh, very, uh, it's like a place of pilgrimage. And when you go there, it, there's just a, 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 a silence that uh, is there. Sorry, can, you can't see these words there. I can't see them that far. Oh, this is this picture I took on the 25th anniversary of Romero's martyrdom in 95, and uh, there were various pilgrims that came on that on that anniversary day of his uh, of his, the anniversary of his assassination. But um, the present government and church leaders want people to forget Romero.